Welcome to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host for this evening, Mike Adams, filling in for Alex Jones tonight. Thanks for joining us. We've got just an extraordinary collection of news coming up for you tonight, including three hard-hitting interviews. One with Bryce Shanka from the 10th Amendment Center is going to talk to us about Occupy Wall Street and the overreaching federal power grab that's taking place in the United States today. We're also talking with Pepe Escobar about the false flag situation where we have an Iranian and American citizen, dual citizen, who is being blamed for an attempted assassination on a Saudi ambassador in the United States. We're going to be breaking that down for you. It is a complete hoax, as you will hear from Pepe Escobar. We've also got some video footage on that. Also joining us tonight to help counter the mainstream media's assault on vitamins is Dr. David Brownstein. He will explain why vitamins won't kill you, even though that's what the mainstream media is reporting. Just an extraordinary collection of stories for you here tonight. Now, getting started on this false flag attack, we have now what could possibly be the pretext for war in the Middle East. It turns out that this Iranian American citizen has been, the mainstream media is saying that he is attacked or he's responsible for this plot to assassinate a Saudi ambassador. But the whole thing turns out to be just really not such an elaborate hoax. It's actually sort of a juvenile hoax. In fact, it turns out that this Iranian terror mastermind has been described as a drunk, pothead, hooker, frequenting joke, a scatterbrained used car salesman. Well, these are pretty harsh words, and this is in a story by Steve Watson that's up at Infowars.com right now. Harsh words, but they indicate that this person is almost certainly not capable of masterminding a highly complex international terror plot as a, a pretext for war. No, this is a patsy who has been recruited by, well, you'll find out, by certain agents within the, the U.S. government apparatus, you might say, a certain individual who's been recruited to carry out acts that will uh, allow them to justify coming actions that will certainly take away your rights. Now, the, the story just doesn't add up. Even the New York Times is saying that the story doesn't really make sense. In a story entitled, Unlikely Turn for a Suspect in a Terror Plot, the New York Times reports that this seems to have been more of a stumbling opportunist than a calculating killer. So here we have an element of the mainstream media that's even questioning the sanity of this story, indicating that, yeah, there's a lot more to know about this. So stay with us here on InfoWars Nightly News as we break this down more with Pepe Escobar in a segment coming up. But first, we have Vice President Joe Biden beating the war drums over this issue. Yes, some are using this as a pretense to call for war, war against Iran. And in fact, we have some video footage of Joe Biden uh, explaining why he thinks this should be a justifiable excuse for taking aggressive action against Iran. Well, the consequences of Iran, I think, are going to be serious because they have not only uh, decided to assassinate someone, they have taken on the very basis of the way in which nations deal with one another. It's critically important that we unite the world in the isolation of and dealing with uh, the Iranians. All right, those were the words of Joe Biden yesterday in response to this, what is now becoming a rather apparent false flag attempt as a pretext for war in the Middle East. Now, the Saudis are now jumping on top of this, too, as opportunists who are taking advantage of the situation. They're saying that Iran must, quote, pay the price for this alleged plot as the U.S. resists retaliation. So you see lots of countries, lots of globalists are beating the war drum in order to try to make this a justification for taking the actions that they wanted to take in the first place. So here to give us some more analysis of this and break this down for us in terms that we can more readily understand is Pepe Escobar. But first, we're going to play some footage that was taken yesterday as Pepe Escobar spoke with RT in a piece entitled, The Iranian Plot Was an Inside Job. Let's go to that. Industrial military complex, they're rooting for a war. Neocons, Republican candidates, everybody in the U.S. that uh, their number one preoccupation in terms of foreign policy is Iran bashing because it's another convenient bogeyman. The problem is this fast and furious plot unraveled by Eric Holder doesn't make sense. And that's the most important point. 
Okay, now and joining us for more analysis of this situation is the journalist you just saw in that video, uh, Pepe Escobar. Pepe, thank you for joining us tonight here on InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for having me, Mike. Pleasure being with you guys. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on. Now, you've offered some very interesting insight. Can you break it down for us here and explain how is Operation Fast and Furious and Attorney General Holder, how is this all linked into Iran and the situation that now seems to be unfolding with this apparent false flag assassination attempt? Wow, I, I wish I had two hours like the Fast and the Furious to try to break it down. Okay, let's try, <laughs> yes. let's try to do it in three minutes, right? Look, the American government wants the whole world to believe, public opinion all around the world, that a, used, a washed up used car salesman from Texas with double nationality running in America, with lots of problems, with bad checks, uh, he cannot match his socks, he brags about everything. According to his neighbors and the people who know him in Corpus Christi, Texas, this guy was tasked by one of the most sophisticated intelligence services in the Iranian system, which is the Quds Force, which is the elite intelligence force inside the Republican Guards in Iran. So these guys, they task this lunatic to go try to find a Mexican drug dealer out of central casting somewhere in Tijuana or in Reynosa, offer these guys $1.5 million for a mob-style hit in Washington, D.C., in the nation's capital against the Saudi ambassador, which is the most strategic ally of the U.S. in the Middle East. And on top of it, this guy promises the so-called Mexican drug cartel, which were, not, which were not members of the Mexican drug cartel. These were DEA agents posing as members of the feared Zetas cartel in Mexico. Everybody who knows a little bit about Mexican drug cartels know they will never touch a political hit inside U.S. territory? Of course not. First of all, their turnover, their annual turnover is something like $40 billion or more. $1.5 million is pocket money. They will never deploy a band of uh, Mexican muchachos, sicarios to D.C. to do this because they, they know that D.C. is one of the most fortified and police uh, territories in the whole planet. They don't know if this is going to work. They don't know this Iranian guy. They are not sure that he has direct connections with the uh, Revolutionary Guards in Iran. And on top of it, the guy is promising, look, we have uh, tons of opium, and I can bring you these tons of opium, maybe what, on an Iran air flight from uh, Tehran to Mexico, well, well, Pepe, let and me... hand it over to the, to the cartel. It, it's so absurd. The whole thing is absurd. Yeah, exactly. The, the absurdity of this is what's so striking here that the whole story falls apart upon any kind of real scrutiny and you as a yes. journalist your your job is to scrutinize these situations bringing in your knowledge your cultural knowledge your geographic knowledge all the research that you've done as well but yeah. why does in, in your view why does the Obama administration believe that it can get away with something that is such an obvious hoax Look, it beats me, it not only beats me, it beats the best analysts of uh, the, the Iranian system. It beats the people like Robert Baer, who worked for the CIA for over 20 years. He said more or less the same thing. This is not the way the IRGC and the Quds Force operate. I've been to Iran many times. I've met some of these guys. It was very difficult for us foreign journalists to meet anybody from the IRGC. Even to talk to a, a simple spokesman in Tehran is very complicated. But these guys, they know what they're doing. They always use proxies. They will never use somebody that they don't know that is a U.S. resident. Uh, they wire money to a New York bank account, which is completely absurd. Everything is trying <laughs> Every, <laughs> right. so, so, That's no, pretty funny. Th there's so many inconsistencies. You know, this guy keeps calling from Tehran to the U.S. and uh, bragging about his connections with the people. Uh, when you when you are an operative for the IRGC or the Quds Force, you would never brag that you are part of them. Of course. That, that's why 
they're so good because they work in secrecy. They have lots of agencies all, uh, all over the Middle East. And of course, we don't know that, but they might have undercover agents inside U.S. territory and certainly in Mexico. But they do have in Venezuela, for instance. Pepe, but let these me... people are ultra secretive, you know. Let me ask you, but look at what's at stake here. There is so much at stake in terms of the power structure. Obama is hurting in the polls. He needs something to make him look like a hero. Israel has been wanting to bomb Iran for, what, years now, Correct. maybe longer, forever, right. And this could provide the pretext to them. The military-industrial complex wants a reason to order more missiles to replace the missiles that they're probably going to launch if something happens. I mean, there are so many major players here that stand to win from this. It seems like that alone provides uh, suspicion to the motivations behind these acts. Absolutely. If we follow the money, there are so many people who will profit from it. You enumerated some of them. Uh, don't forget the House of South, because the House of South, they are in a mortal confrontation with Iran for decades now. Uh, they consider themselves to be the true guardians of uh, Sunni Islam, of the real Islam, the pure Islam, because they guard Mecca and Medina. On the other hand, the Shiites in Iran, they think they're, they develop the purest form of Islam. So there there is a religious conflict, there is a geopolitical conflict for supremacy in the Middle East, and of course, there's the Arab Spring element. What happened after the beginning of the Arab Spring? The counter-revolution was started by Saudi Arabia. They told the U.S. bluntly, look, this Arab Spring bullshit is not going to work here in our backyard, the Persian Gulf. We rule here. We are the top dogs. You can do anything you want in Northern Africa. And that's why, for instance, they facilitated that Arab League vote that led to UN Resolution 973, that led to NATO Imperial War, that led to the fall of Gaddafi. And look at what happened in Bahrain. They invaded Bahrain. Look what happened inside Saudi Arabia in the eastern provinces. Mostly Shiites live there. That's where the oil is. And that's where the unrest against the Wahhabi dynasty in Riyadh is uh, very, very powerful. They preempted everything. They are still repressing it. We don't read about it, not even in the Middle Eastern press. You won't follow this in Al Jazeera, for instance. You won't no. see this in Al Arabia. And obviously, you won't see that in the US and uh, European press as well. So now, for the House of Saudi, it's perfect because they are being depicted as the victim of an evil plot by the evil <laughs> Iranians. <laughs> right. You see, so the U.S. wins, the Obama administration wins, the neocons win, Israel wins, and the House of South wins. Who loses? World peace. <laughs> well, exactly. The, the American people lose, the Saudi people lose, the Iranian people lose, the Israeli people lose. Once again, it's the people losing and the governments uh, winning in their minds, even though, of course, they ultimately lose as well. But Sure. We're about to wrap this up in, in a couple of minutes here, Pepe, but let me ask you this. Okay. You cited many very important cultural contexts for explaining uh, what is happening with, with the House of Saud, for example, and, and the, the history of key members of, uh, in Iran uh, who, yes. who would be responding to this and so on. But the American people are generally not in a sophisticated way informed uh, about these issues. This is, this is beyond the, the sort of cut and dry, make it simple, dumb it down mainstream news that most people are, are hearing. So sure. it seems like it's easy for the mainstream media to just sell the American people on a, on a fairy tale. Absolutely. And I, I've been following closely the, the coverage in the U.S. corporate media, and it's amazing. They think that they, get, they can get away with anything, and there's not even an inch of questioning of the official story. You only read about that on the Internet and on websites from Asia or from Europe, for that matter. It's crazy because anybody who knows how the Iranian system works, you look at this plot and you see that it's absolutely implausible. If they wanted to kill uh, a Saudi ambassador, they could kill a Saudi ambassador in Iraq or in Syria or in Jordan. Of course, right. Easier. Why they do it in Washington? There, and their operatives are there, right? So how could you establish a plan like that in Washington, D.C., of all places, which is like if you are a, a suicidal regime inviting the U.S. to strike you. It's beyond counterproductive. It's beyond foolishness, in fact. So uh, the thing is, uh, I think the most uh, 
plausible uh, way to explain what happened is this guy, by the way, this guy is an opponent of the regime. So yeah. he may have he may have concocted this plan. The DA agents were already infiltrated, got hold of this guy. They sold him the idea that this plan could be concluded. In fact, they don't always forget did, that yes. it was the DA agents who, who suggested the restaurant hit. It was not uh, Arbib Sar, the, the Iranian American guy. Well, look, this so is he just... was induced to do something that the FBI and the DA wanted him to do. So right. one, once again, another patsy. So now another the, patsy that you've nailed it. That's the pattern that we're seeing here. Another patsy set up by the very uh, quote authorities in the United States that claim to be protecting us from terrorism are actually uh, creating these patsies and then blaming them to justify that. It, it's incredible. Pepe, uh, I, I apologize that we only have this short segment with you. I know we could talk about okay. this for hours. Oh, yeah. I also know that. <laughs> that you're a welcome guest back here on InfoWars, Nightly News, and the Alex Jones Show, so I know we'll be talking to you more, or Alex will probably. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight, Pepe. My pleasure. My pleasure, Mike. Really, really great to hear from you. All right, take care. All right, that was Pepe Escobar, a reporter for Asia Times newspaper, joining us from, I believe he's joining us from Brazil tonight. Just an extraordinary amount of information coming out about this issue. Now, we're about to go to break, but when we come back on the other side, we're going to be talking about the new hit on vitamins. The mainstream media is trying to convince you that vitamins will kill you. And here to counter that bit of disinfo is Dr. David Brownstein, who's going to break down these studies for us and tell us why that's complete hogwash. Vitamins are actually good for you. Stay with us here on the other side of the break at Info Welcome back. This is InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your fill-in host this evening, Mike Adams from Natural News, filling in for Alex Jones. We've got a couple of great interviews coming up for you, including an inter interview with Bryce Shanka from the Tenth Amendment Center, commenting on the Occupy Wall Street protests. And also Dr. David Brownstein is going to talk about why vitamins won't kill you, even though the mainstream media says they might. But first, more health news. Jerry Brown, the governor of California, has signed a bill that allows 12-year-old children, if you can believe that, to give consent to being vaccinated with a vaccine that we know is maiming and, in some cases, killing children. Now, keep in mind that children have to give their consent to visit the zoo or to go to a museum. Or even now in California, if you're under 18, you need parental consent to get a tan in a tanning salon. But you don't need consent from your parents to get injected with a vaccine that just might kill you. It's a crucial issue of a state overpowering parents' rights and putting children at risk. You can expect to hear more about this on InfoWars and the Alex Jones Show uh, each, each day. Next item, we've got Walgreens has been caught bullying customers over flu vaccines. This is what we are hearing at Natural News from our readers who are saying that they feel bullied, they feel intimidated by Walgreens employees who keep asking them, are you gonna get a flu shot, huh? Did you want a flu shot? Did you get your flu shot yet? You gotta get a flu shot if you don't wanna have a cold. They're even doing this to pregnant women, of course, who should never receive a flu shot. We've even had reports from employees at Walgreens who are saying they're afraid they'll lose their jobs if they don't push vaccines onto people. But you can help speak out against this. Check the story up on Infowars.com right now, which gives you options for filing protests against Walgreens and CVS pharmacies for overly aggressive flu shot bullying. <laughs> okay, moving on with other stories. The FDA has decided that if your dog is depressed, he needs some more drugs. That's right, if Fido looks a little sleepy, or maybe just a little down, maybe bored, well, your dog needs some antidepressants, and this is now being fulfilled by the drug industry, which says, I guess it's not enough to drug your children. We want to drug your household pets as well. So watch for more pharmaceuticals and mind-altering psychiatric drugs to be made available for your pets in the coming months and years as the FDA continues to conspire with the pharmaceutical industry to drug every living thing in your household. More news. Neuroscience has given us some new findings about so-called unrealistic optimism. <laughs> wow, uh, what an interesting term. This comes from the journal uh, Nature Neuroscience. 
which has published a story entitled, or I'm sorry, a research article entitled, How Unrealistic Optimism is Maintained in the Face of Reality. Now, this article goes into the idea that many people have a coding error in their brains. They are unable to look at negative information in the future, such as, hey, the stock market might crash, or your government might be plotting a war to enslave you, or there's fluoride in the water and it's killing you and your children, or things like that, that people are unable to actually code that cognitively in their brains, and so they become denialists. Well, we've always wondered, why are people out there unable to see the truth about big issues like, let's say, oh, 9-11 or government tyranny? Well, this study helps to answer that question, providing a scientific basis for the lack of rational coding in the minds of fellow human beings. And this affects about 80% of the population, by the way. Now, coming up in just a minute, we're going to be talking with Dr. David Brownstein. He's a medical doctor and an expert in nutrition. And this concerns a new study that has been published. It's called, the title of it is Dietary Supplements and Mortality Rate in Older Women. Uh, this has been published throughout the mainstream media in a highly distorted way. They have taken the data out of this study and used it to create crazy headlines that lie to you. For example, here we have a headline that says, Study Links Vitamins to Higher Death Rates in Women. This is from CTV. Uh, the next headline from USA Today says, Study flags risk of daily vitamin use among elderly or among older women. Uh, another headline in Time magazine declares, We've been wasting a ton of money on vitamins and dietary supplements. But is that really true? Or are these just mainstream media distortions about a scientific study that did not reach that conclusion at all? Well, I've got a copy of the study right here in front of me. I've looked at the numbers, and they don't say that. In fact, the numbers say that many nutrients are, in fact, life-saving nutrients, such as vitamin D. But that wasn't reported in the mainstream media at all. So this is why we're going to be joined by David Brownstein in, in just a minute to give us more details about that. Here's another headline from the Los Angeles Times. Dietary supplements risky for older women, study finds declares the LA Times. It's absolutely incredible. And now with more analysis on this unprovoked attack on dietary supplements is nutrition expert Dr. David Brownstein who joins us by Skype. Dr. Brownstein, thank you for joining us here on InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for having me, Mike. What's your take on this study and how it has been used by the mainstream media to really attack vitamins? Mike, this study says absolutely nothing about vitamins. If this study was done in reverse, where vitamins were shown to be effective, no journal would have printed this study because it was so poorly done. It was an observational study of 38,000 women done over about an 18-year period. And what they did was they sent out surveys to the women three times over this period and asked them what they were eating and what supplements they were taking. And they drew that data together and then uh, wrote this study up. The problem is a study done with an observational study done with um, surveys is notoriously inaccurate. And if you look through the data in the study, Mike, calcium, magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, magnesium, selenium, and even multivitamins were shown in the study to be uh, to lower mortality rates in certain areas of the study. So I'm not quite sure where the authors drew their final conclusions from, but the media certainly picked up on only the negative aspects of the study, and I don't think there's much conclusions you can draw from this study at all. Well, would you say this is another example of the mainstream media cherry-picking the, the conclusion that they wanted to pull out of it while ignoring the rest? I mean, like you said, it showed lower mortality rates for vitamin D and vitamin C and many others, but they didn't report that. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's another in a long line of the media cherry-picking a negative study about vitamins. And this study wasn't really negative about vitamins. It was a neutral study on vitamins. And it was very poorly done and shouldn't have been reported in the first place. And it should have been published in this prestigious journal in the first place. But, but it's like you said, it, it seems that any kind of junk science is acceptable to the mainstream media as long as it fits their agenda of saying that vitamins are deadly and that, that uh, sunlight is deadly, or chemotherapy is good for you, vaccines are good for you, GMOs are good for you, but oh, God forbid, don't take a multivitamin. 
It's incredible. Absolutely. There's a medical industrial complex out there trying to serve its purpose and keep its profits up, and this is the way it works. And again, I think this study is a bunch of nonsense, and I will be writing about this more in the future. Uh, Dr. Brownstein, I, I, I want to tell you, by the way, I, I really admire your work and have followed you for many years, and you are best known for your expertise on the trace mineral iodine. And uh, could you just, could you give us your website for one thing, and also, uh, what do people need to know about iodine that they're not getting from the mainstream media in the same way that they distorted this news? Well, my website is drbrownstein.com, drbrownstein.com. And when, when I lecture about iodine to professionals, I title the lecture, The Most Misunderstood Nutrient. There are more falsity of conclusions about iodine that have been perpetuated by conventional medicine, and they are still perpetuated today. Iodine is one of the most important nutrients. It's one of the most important things I've seen in my practice over the last 20 years. Iodine levels have fallen 50% in the United States over the last 30 years, and we've had a concomitant rise in thyroid problems, breast problems, ovarian problems, and prostate problems. It can all be related to iodine deficiency. Uh, also, isn't, isn't obesity uh, related to iodine deficiency as well? Absolutely. As thyroid problems start to develop, we see obesity problems. I think iodine is the most commonly misdiagnosis uh, seen in medicine today. Uh, isn't it also, uh, well, you talk about iodine, but uh, what's your take on vitamin D? Because vitamin D in this particular study was actually shown, although perhaps not, not significantly, because it was only a, a three, three questions over several years, but vitamin D was shown to lower mortality rates. Uh, do you also help teach people about vitamin D and, and how it can help save lives? Absolutely, Mike. You know, we've become conditioned in our country to fear the sun, that the sun is killing everybody out there. And over the last 30 years, we've been in the sun less. We use a lot more sunscreen. We have more skin cancer. We have more melanoma. We have more chronic disease. And that can all be related to less sun exposure and less vitamin D production. And again, this is serving the mainstream medical purpose, but it's not serving our patient's purpose. Well, that seems to be the common thread here, isn't it? That this study, or I should say the reporting of this study, which has been distorted by the mainstream media, it does seem to serve an agenda or it serves the financial interests of the drug companies because the message here which i think you would agree is is false and distorted is that vitamins will kill you but pharmaceuticals and vaccines and all these other interventions are healthy for you uh, mike it's, mike, yeah, go it's ahead. very simple all you have to do is study biochemistry and try and optimize biochemistry. You do that with proper nutrition, proper diet, maintaining hydration. You don't do that with drugs and chemotherapy agents that poison enzymes and block receptors in the body. It makes common sense and it makes biochemical sense. But it almost seems like conventional medicine is trying to position their drugs or their vaccines as if they were nutrients. For example, when you're born, they say you're born deficient in a vaccine or deficient in a, in a drug, and they, they then give that to you, and then they consider you to be whole. I mean, isn't that the role that nutrition should play, not synthetic patented chemicals? Absolutely. Unfortunately, doctors aren't taught about nutrition. They're not taught about diet. They have no knowledge about this. What doctors are taught is about drugs how to prescribe them and how to use them. And that's why we're in the problem that we're in right now. And that's why we're in the healthcare mess that we're in right now. Well, getting back to this particular study entitled Dietary Supplements and Mortality Rate in Older Women, why does the media get away with such gross distortions of what the study actually says? I mean, why isn't the public up in arms over the fact that they're being lied to? Why, why do people buy this stuff? Well, the, the public is being get, getting distorted information because the media is being paid by the big pharmaceutical ads that are in every newspaper and all the football games and all the TV stations, and that's where the money is. And they know they can't bite the hand that feeds them, and that's why this information's out there. But your newsletter, my newsletter, my writings, your writings are making a difference, and the Internet makes a difference, and patients can find the true information if they search for it. Well, well, very quickly, we're almost out of time with, in this segment with you, but I got to ask you, you are an MD, you went to medical school, you've been through conventional training, and yet you have a much greater uh, intelligence and wisdom and grasp of the, the bigger issues with nutrition. How did you go on that journey? I mean, what, what brought you to this point of having this greater understanding? 
Well, my turnaround came when my father became very ill with heart disease and was what I thought was dying. He was on a whole host of medications. And what I did was I changed his diet. Well, I tried to change his diet. He really wasn't into that. But I gave him a few nutrients and a few natural hormones. And his 20-year history of uh, angina, continual angina, melted away within seven days of doing that. His cholesterol in the 300s fell below 200 without changing his dietary habits. And once I saw the changes in my father, that's really what I've dedicated my career towards, was using holistic therapies and trying to help patients optimize their biochemistry through nutrition. Well, it's really incredible to hear that. It's, it's heartening, actually, to hear it that, that you exhibit what a true doctor really means, someone who has compassion, someone who wants to help people heal, someone who's willing to follow the evidence and find out what works. I want to thank you, Dr. Brownstein, for your uh, time here tonight and your contributions to the world at large. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me on, Mike. It's great, great to have you on. Uh, and, and take care. Wow, what, what a really just an incredible MD who understands holistic nutrition. Just a fantastic segment there. Learn more at drbrownstein.com. Now, continuing on the health topic, uh, we have some interesting information, some rather groundbreaking information on the health effects or the health results, you might say, of unvaccinated children versus vaccinated children. This is something that the mainstream conventional in medical industry does not want to discuss, but we're going to discuss it right here on InfoWars Nightly News coming up. Right All right, welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your fill-in host this evening, Mike Adams, filling in for Alex Jones. Thank you for continuing with us here. We've got interesting news about genetically modified organisms that are found in foods in which you might not expect them. A new study put out by the Cornucopia Report has found that so-called natural breakfast cereal products are actually loaded, in many cases, with genetically modified ingredients. Sometimes as much as 50% genetically engineered corn is found in some of these products. And in fact, a few products that are labeled as GMO-free were actually found to contain substantial levels of GMOs. There's a lot more news breaking about this in the days ahead on both the Alex Jones Show and, of course, InfoWars Nightly News. We broke this story on Natural News as well, and we will continue to have coverage there. We also interviewed, by the way, Mark Castell from the Cornucopia Institute on the Alex Jones Show today. So check that archive if you haven't yet heard that interview. In additional news, we've got uh, Komen for the Cure denies any link between cancer and BPA. That's bisphenol A, the plastics chemical found in packaged food and made worse by microwaving your food in plastic, by the way. That really causes that BPA to go into your food. It's also found in nearly all canned foods because of the resin lining in the cans. It contains a high level of BPA. So why is Komen for the Cure denying any link to BPA? Could it be a follow the money issue? Could it be that some of the donors to the Komen for the Cure nonprofit are actually selling products made with BPA in their packaging materials? Well, we don't have all the answers to that, but it's certainly worth asking some questions, and we will have continued coverage of that issue on the Alex Jones Show. Next item, unvaccinated children versus vaccinated children. Who's really healthier? Care to, care to take a guess? Well, you know, the vaccine industry has been terrified about the possibility of a study being done that would compare the actual health outcomes of vaccinated children versus unvaccinated children. But guess what? A survey has been done that provides some early details about the answers to that very question. And guess what? Shouldn't be surprising either. Those who are vaccinated were found to have more than double the allergy rates and up to 800% more risk of developing asthma and chronic bronchitis than unvaccinated children. So that's the answer for you there. Unvaccinated children are healthier than vaccinated children. All right, and related to the vaccine issue is the whole question of government power. Obviously, federal governments mandate vaccination policies in the United States and many countries, but it begs the question, what else does the government, the federal government, have power to do, especially in terms of overruling states' rights on issues that impact us all? And here to help answer that question is Bryce Shonka from the 10th Amendment Center, who's going to talk a little bit about 
government and Occupy Wall Street. Now, uh, Bryce, thanks for joining us here today. Um, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. It's really great to talk to you again. Yeah, it's great to see you. What's your take on Occupy Wall Street today? Is it, is it moving in the right direction? Is, is it still chaos? Uh, what's the outcome going to be in, in your view? Well, in my view, it's the start of something. It's, it's the genesis of something that we haven't seen before, um, possibly ever in American history, um, because it seems like in the past, like with the Vietnam War movement, the issue was clear. Uh, you know, that, everybody knew why they were there. This is a movement of people who simply know that something's wrong, and that's what's bringing them out. And the message is being shaped. Uh, the ideologies are coming in, and, and the claws are, are attempting to, to grasp onto this movement of young people. Um, but I've been down to Occupy Seattle, and I spent quite a bit of time there last week. And uh, what I saw was not represented by the mainstream media views. Shocker. Uh, yeah, well, what specifically? For example, were there a lot of Ron Paul supporters there? or in the Fed supporters, but they weren't being interviewed by the mainstream media? Is that what you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, there certainly were that. Uh, there was also just a spirit amongst the people that I did spend quite a bit of time talking to that they weren't interested in just jumping on board with some other ideology or having some other organization or some kind of other you know, uh, philosophy come in and just uh, dominate the thing. Uh, they seemed really determined to keep it an independent and free spirit uh, keep it a place where everybody's voice could be heard. I know that was something that was uh, kind of a big deal when I was down there. Um, there really weren't too many restrictions on, on who was allowed to talk to the group when they were forming their general assembly. So in my opinion, uh, if you have strong feelings about the way we should move forward as a society, uh, you should get down there and make your voice heard, period. Yeah, I agree with you. That's great advice. Uh, I, I totally support activism and getting off your couches and off your butts and hitting the streets on this issue. But let me ask you this. Uh, many of the protesters we know are calling for bigger government solutions. They're saying, you know, government is going to solve all these problems that we're facing today. And yet the organization that, that you represent, uh, that you are with, the, the 10th Amendment Center, is helping to educate people about limits on federal power and the sovereign rights of states. So how do you see this issue ultimately playing out with Occupy Wall Street protesters, Bryce? Well, if, if the solution that they wind up with is a solution that calls for force by the government, then A, they're marching themselves right back into the place that they say that they're trying to come from. Uh, you know, they're, they're asking the beast to help them with controlling the beast. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, right. So hopefully they reach that conclusion on their own. But at 10th Amendment Center, you know, we reach out to groups all the time that don't necessarily have uh, their entire ideology in line with ours. There's some things that they stand for that we don't necessarily agree with. The point is, if you're interested in decentralizing this out of control government, if you're interested in following the Constitution, every issue, every time, no exceptions, no excuses, then you're on our side. It doesn't matter what group you say you're with. It doesn't matter who you voted for. Uh, that's our position. We will take all comers. But if you're proposing that we enlarge an already out of control federal government, then that's not something that I can be a part of. I just see it as a stage where the, um, you know, the, the, the page is still being written on what they're even doing. If you look at the demands of the Occupy Seattle group, for instance, number one was uh, corporate accountability. Okay, that's not so very communist. That's something I can agree with, and it's sure. a little vague. But and then the next one down was to abolish the Federal Reserve. Now that's something that I could really get behind because it's taking a huge slice out of uh, the out of control monster that is Washington D.C. Well, yeah, clearly those are two key issues. But then it seems like some of the other proposals or demands by perhaps some of the more liberal leaning groups. Uh, are being made in complete ignorance of, of history, because history shows that, that forming a, a just and fair government is a very tricky business, and, it, and most of the ideas throughout history have failed. So why do they think that just because they have good intentions uh, that their, their ideas are going to work? Seems like we've got to go with a, a blueprint that does work, and that blueprint already exists. Well, the blueprint already exists. It's, it's been left in the back of the shed collecting dust for, you know, at least 100 years now. And all of these kids, let's be fair, all of these kids went through schools 
where the final say on what was being taught was the Federal Board of Education. So why in the world would they think anything other than the federal government is there to help me get through life? It's what they've been taught all of their lives. And, uh, you know, everybody in the liberty movement that I know of had sort of a, a moment where they unplugged from that um, that sense of faith in the central government and realized that it is what it is, just a machine designed to grow larger and to control more and more of our lives. Uh, Bryce, I want to ask you about your Nullify Now conferences, which you have uh, taking place all across the country to help educate people. I'm sure many of the people who have been at your conferences are now participating in the Occupy Wall Street protests and adding some real intelligent economic views to the debate. Uh, tell us about Nullify Now, if you would, please. Sure. Well, Nullify Now was something that we started at 10th Amendment Center just over a year ago. And I think we're closing in on 12 cities now total on the tour. Um, it's been an amazing experience because the kind of outreach you can get when you show up somewhere is completely different than what you get through a website or a discussion group online or, you know, even like with our new radio show, TRX, um, there's no substitute for just being in front of someone, shaking their hand, showing them that I'm just another human being wanting to share these ideas, wanting to educate, wanting to make things better for everybody. And so that's what we've been doing. We're going to Jacksonville, Florida on October 22nd, which is our next event. Uh, featuring Tom Woods, Jack Hunter, um, you know, and then a, a whole slew of other names, including Michael Bolden, uh, founder of 10th Amendment Center. So, um, yeah, we've been doing these events. We price them cheap. We want people to be able to go. We don't want to do a, you know, $75 a plate thing even. Um, you know, you can get an Anolify now, I think right now for five bucks for Jacksonville, because I believe there's a special on. <laughs> All right. For free. Well, that's so, good. Yeah, we're just, we're trying to create, and, you know, and, and to be honest with you, I imagine at some point, if hopefully the climate is fertile enough, I imagine doing like a Nullify Now rally at one of these Occupy events. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense, Bryce. Uh, NullifyNow.com, is that the website where people can find the schedule? Yeah, yeah, yeah. NullifyNow.com. It's all about educating. It's all about transpartisan activism. No more, you know, left versus right. Let's just work together. Let's Let me, push back. Let me ask you one more thing, Bryce. Um, if you would, please, when... If, if I could ask you to summarize, what is it that the Tenth Amendment Center really wants? What do you believe in? Summarize it in 30 or 60 seconds so people really understand where you're coming from. What we want is to restore the balances that were designed in the Constitution, which means that there's a check on the federal government, and that check is the states. It is not the Supreme Court like so many people like to think. The Supreme Court are just a bunch of guys in black dresses. I mean, they really don't hold that kind of position in the, the scheme that the founders devised. And so uh, 10th Amendment Center is really all about breaking down federal power, breaking apart the machine into pieces that are manageable, pieces that are far less uh, likely to be corrupted, and uh, to really just return power to the people as states, as counties, as uh, local communities. You know, it's all about keeping it local. It's all about people taking care of each other instead of relying on this monstrous machine called the centralized state to do it for them. Well, well said, Bryce. I want to thank you for joining us here on InfoWars Nightly News. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Appreciate your input. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. All right. Thank you, Bryce. All right. Well, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for joining us in this whirlwind of news that we've been bringing to you here. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe at prisonplanet.tv, and you'll have this kind of breaking news brought to you each weeknight. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in tonight for Alex Jones with InfoWars Nightly News. Good night. Take care.